game is Try to help me now, man. Well, let me be honest with you about this one. Oh boy, I hate this game. I mean, it makes me want to kill myself. Now, the only comforting thing to know is that everybody seems to share my frustration. Karate Kid is a game that has haunted many of our childhoods. I mean, everybody has the same story. I love the movie, so I got the Nintendo game, and I couldn't stand it. Yet, I had to keep on playing it because I had to beat it. So, what is it about this game that's drawn so many unfortunate kids to turn into bitter adults, reminiscing on their angry childhood, screaming at the TV, throwing the controllers? I mean, anybody who has beaten this incredibly hard piece of will not have any sense of satisfaction, but rather regrets, because it is a complete waste of time. I mean, it's like coming out of a brutal fight, being the winner, but achieving nothing for all your troubles, but some bloody bruises and broken bones. It's just not worth it. The biggest problem is that the control is so awkward. You have to press up to jump, which doesn't really help because you can only go straight up in the air. He has, yeah, it gotta be like absolutely still. And if you touch an enemy, you fly in the opposite direction. You can't get close enough to really attack anybody. You die in every pit and it's so easy to fall into them. So every time you get hit near a pit, you're basically dead. Level 1 is ridiculously easy. You just fight one-on-one -on -one and then you kick the shit out of everybody. And there you go, you win. You do it again and again. Now level 2 is where we get to the side-scrolling gameplay. It's almost a rip-off of Kung Fu, but much worse. Every once in a while, there's these stupid bonus stages, which are next to impossible. I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that it would be easier to do this in real life. Now, when you get to level 3, there's a typhoon, so the wind keeps pushing you back. And if that's not enough, there's these twigs and birds flying through the air. Every possible projectile hurts you and makes you fly back. And there's pits everywhere. I hate this game, but why am I playing it? Well, that's the question everyone has asked themselves, and they all have the same reason. Because you're angry and you want to win. You want to beat the Nintendo, but the cold fact is that nobody cares but you. Then you get to level 4 and holy shit, is it hard. You can't get near anybody to attack them, and they all have these long spears that make you fly back. You can sometimes hit people when you're walking uphill, but when you're going down, you can't really attack low enough to hit them. They're all basically just bullying up on you, and they just knock you all around and there's nothing you can do. And guess what? That's the last level, and if you are expecting some big ending to be worth all your trouble, well you're wrong. The only thing that happens at the end is that Mr. Miyagi winks. What a piece of shit. I mean, I guess they decided because the game's only four levels long, it better be the hardest four levels ever. Well, how about this? How about if I made a game where there's just this one cliff you have to jump over and it's like nearly impossible, but if you do it, you win the game and that's it. I mean, what the hell were they thinking with this piece of shit? What the hell? Now, if you're a serious Nintendo collector, do yourself a favor, don't get this game because it's not worth it. I mean, it's made many lives miserable. And, you know, if you see it on sale for a dollar, just stay away. Don't even touch it. Mick Kids is nothing more than an advertising vehicle, much like games such as Yo Noid and 7-Eleven Spot. Now some people out there may actually like this game, and to be fair, it isn't one of the worst games in the NES library. There are definitely much crappier games such as Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout and Silver Surfer, for example. So anyway, let's check out Mick Kids. So there's Ronald with his magic bag, bag of hallucinogenic drugs. I always thought that clown was one scary mother. The Hamburglar stole his bag, apparently. 
All right, this is the first level. Now, does it look familiar? So where have I seen this before? Jumping around, collecting M's? Oh, like coins. And Mario Brothers? Like, yeah, that's where I've seen this. It's just like Super Mario Brothers 3. Let's check it out. I mean, the map looks similar. Same idea. The stages are designed the same. Jumping on enemies. I mean, everything looks the same. Mario's controls were a lot better, though. Well, pretty much everything is better. So back to McKids. You know, I changed my mind. It actually is pretty original. I mean, walking upside down, I mean, that's pretty creative. Well, it makes me feel sick. They must have been on crack when they came up with this game. So you go around collecting cards that you need to beat the level. So, there you go, in the Ronald's Magic Zipper, running around through Magic McDonald world. God, that really makes me nauseous. And don't try to kill anything with those blocks, that it really doesn't work too well. Collect some more useless M's that don't do anything. Alright, here's a bonus game. You jump on these arrows that make you go up. And you gotta jump on the white ones until you get to the top, and then when you get to the top, you go into another zipper, and you collect some one-ups, which aren't really that important, because there's a part where you can get a whole bunch of them. Then you go to birdie stage. Stupid feather bird <laughs> Cute smiley face. You know what's a big problem with this game? I mean, you never know what's below you. You just fall and die. This game's so bad, they actually invented a way to end it by pushing start and select at the same time. So you get this block, which makes you heavier, so you can jump higher, well, lower, really. And now you have another one-up that you don't need, so that's just a waste of time. Oh, and look, I died anyway, so what a waste. Oh god, look, a McFlurry man! Those guys are badass. So how do I get that card? Oh, every kid knows how to do this. Just get the secret passageway under the clouds. Yeah, that's easy to figure out. Kids will have the patience to figure that out. Because, you know, kids have a lot of patience. Especially the ones with ADD, such as myself. Then you go to Grimace's board. Here's Grimace, the big purple Look at his house. It looks like Barney the Dinosaur's Okay, so here's the part where you can get a billion one-ups. So you just get two one-ups here, and then you go back into the board again. You die here, but you always get one extra, so if you have an hour to waste, then there you go. <laughs> have fun. You're completely wasting your time anyway if you're playing this game, as I am, let alone make a video about it. And some people like to call one-ups extra guys or free mans. I like to call them life insurance. Look how bad the jumps are. Look at this. What a load of all I want to do is get down to that barrel, but it's such a pain in the I mean, It keeps bouncing me back up. Farts. It never ends with this game. It's just like an infinite turd coming out of my just like an endless rope. I mean, when the is it going to be over? I can't stand this Watch the moose. Grab a block and try to kill him. Unfortunately, it just bounces and misses him. Now look at this. Would you ever guess that you're supposed to jump off this cliff? And this really reminds me of Super Mario Bros. 3 again. And also, why is this guy walking on water? Who does he think he is? Jesus Christ? Then you gotta talk to the professor, another one of Ronald's stoner friends. And he tells you to get more cards, which makes me just want to punch him. Even worse, you gotta go to the moon, where you meet Cosmic. Now who the hell's Cosmic? Did they run out of McDonald's characters? What about Captain Crook or Big Mac? No, Cosmic. I never heard of him. I guess there's nothing more you can expect but a character like that. I mean, I bet the people who designed this game were paid minimum wage. So anyway, you're on the moon, so you're floating around, and then there's these tentacles that come out and kill you wherever you go. And you really gotta bust your to find all those cards. Like there's this one that's high up in the air, and even when you get it, you jump back down and something kills you and you gotta start the whole level all over again. So here you are at the last stage, Robble Robble. You gotta get the cards from Hamburglar. 
So you gotta get across the lava by throwing these blocks in it while all this stuff is shooting at you. So look at this. This is some kind of track you have to move on, but you can't because the controls are so hard. So do you hit A or B? I don't know. I have no idea how to control this. You'd think you can just hold the A button or something, but no, of course not. That would be too simple. They have to make it like you do these little taps with the button to make it move. I mean, the controls just suck What a piece of A little kid could never figure this out. So finally, when you get through all these crazy obstacles, you get up here, you walk all the way to this lava pit, and you don't have any blocks to float over it. You can't go around it, so what do you do? Guess you just gotta commit suicide. Toasty!